Hi, and welcome to Teaching Tip Tuesday, brought to you by the Center for Inclusive Teaching and Learning at UWSP. During the past decade, the United States has seen a breakdown of political norms that has been frustrating and appalling to many. Lack of civility and discourse, ad hominem attacks, and calls for violence have become commonplace. Online echo chambers have convinced just about everybody that they are resolutely correct and that everybody in this country agrees with them. Rather than facing those who disagree with us respectfully as the opposition, rhetoric has changed to engage those who disagree as enemies and to attach dire existential threats to the political success of these enemies. In this charged political environment, it's difficult to predict how people will respond to the outcome of this year's election. After all, the 2016 election led to a protest including millions across the country called the Women's March, and the 2020 presidential election led to the events of January 6, 2021. I don't think any of us are sure what will happen this time around, but many of us are nervous. That's why in Siddle's final installment in the election 2024 series of teaching tips, I'd like to discuss some of the considerations you should have in mind for dealing with the aftermath of the election in your classes. For those of you teaching the day following the general election, you may have to bear the brunt of what will have been a difficult night. Election nights are long. Students may be tired if they stayed up late to watch as results came in. If the election is called for one candidate by the time you meet with your students, it's likely that at least half of them will be feeling disappointment, disbelief, helplessness, and possibly disenfranchisement. Others may be basking in the triumphant glow and joy of winning. These reactions might be strongest for those whose identities were targeted in some way by election rhetoric or policy proposals. So keep that in mind when meeting with your students. If the election isn't called by the next day, everybody may be experiencing a hot moment with a lot of tension and worry about the unknown. Because presidential elections run on a four-year cycle, this will be the first time that most of your students have participated in such an election. So the emotions that they're experiencing will probably be unfamiliar to them. Whether your course has dealt with election issues or not, you may want to take some time the day after the election to help students process what they're experiencing. This is important for their mental health and for development of the healthy coping strategies that young adults need. You might want to begin by polling the students to see who's tired. Consider pacing your class activities according to the results you get. Allow a few minutes for your students to jot down their thoughts and feelings about the election and to identify people in their support network who they can reach out to later in the day because they may not have thought to do this on their own. Next, acknowledge that the election results may be associated with strong emotions that can make it difficult to focus and learn. Then, invite students to step out of the classroom if they need a little bit of time to refocus. If you don't want to engage further with the election, then conduct your day's lesson as planned. If you want to engage in election issues, it's appropriate to spend time directing students to discipline specific ways to engage in civic processes that will channel their emotions and feelings about the election in a positive and productive way. Although many things are out of any one individual's control, there are still things that you can do to improve conditions that you care about, and students need to hear this. No matter what the outcome of the election is, students can express agency by engaging in service, volunteerism, and work that moves their political goals forward. This is directly related to the Wisconsin idea and taking learning beyond the classroom to benefit all the people of Wisconsin. Think about sharing examples of how your discipline or field is related to broader social systems, including economic, political, health care, and educational systems. Consider telling your students how your discipline or field is affected by federal, state, and local legislative policies or judicial decisions. Finally, identify ways that students can engage with these processes to further ideas that are important to them, especially opportunities to volunteer with appropriate charities or civic entities. 
some examples of useful activities for students to channel their feelings regarding the election include conservation-oriented students volunteering to clean up local waterways, sustainability-oriented students volunteering to help a local school grow a vegetable garden, literature-oriented students volunteering to help kids at Boys and Girls Club write their own books, visual arts students volunteering at local schools or galleries to promote the arts in their community. Finally, students with interests in political science participating in local meetings or meeting with public officials to discuss policies of importance to them. There are many ways for students to engage so that they don't feel helpless or disenfranchised. Now for the part of this video I've been dreading. In light of the very emotionally charged protests that followed the last two presidential elections, it's important that you be prepared for civil unrest and disruptions to the normal academic calendar that could result from this election. Here are some steps to take. Have a contingency plan in place for your courses. This could include alternative assignments, flexible deadlines, or options for remote learning. Maintain open lines of communication with your students. Inform students about any potential changes to the course schedule or format as early as possible. Be prepared to provide support to students who may be affected by political unrest. This could include offering extensions on assignments, providing resources for mental health support, or facilitating discussions about events. In the event of disruptions, collaborate with UWSP administration. Work closely with university administrators to ensure that you're following the university's guidelines and appropriate procedures. Stay informed about the local situation and be prepared to adapt your plans as necessary. Finally, although we all hope this won't be necessary, review campus emergency procedures. In the event of any violence on campus, it's important that appropriate emergency procedures are fresh in your minds. As a university instructor, you have a unique position to help young adults deal with tense elections, practice appropriate self-care, productively engage in civic processes, and foster the Wisconsin idea. And that's this week's teaching tip from the Center for Inclusive Teaching and Learning here at UWSP. Remember, at Siddle, we offer support for course design, learning activities, assessment, and pedagogy. Visit our website to schedule a consultation today.